Hey guys, so this video is gonna kind of be the ultimate Gen 3 speed density tuning video. I've done some in the past about how to uh, fail the mass airflow sensor and how to um, build some of the graphs and the histograms and how to do the speed density tuning, but I've had a lot of people ask me about turning off things like fuel decel cutoff as well as disabling essentially power enrichment. What does it do? What does it look like? And so I'm gonna do two data log files for you. One where all I do is fail the mass airflow sensor um, and I leave power enrichment and fuel decel cut off like it is. Um, I already have catalytic overtemp disabled. Um, this is a method that the tuning school uses um, that I still use a pretty good bit. Uh, but I've had people ask me, um, why would you not fail that stuff? Because there's a lot of folks on the internet that are pretty big that say that you don't have to. Um, I haven't some in the past, sometimes I have, uh, it just kind of depends. And then I'm also gonna do a second file um, with maybe some driving videos on how uh, to do that and what the different data logs look like in terms of how you can filter out some of the data and then finally how to implement it. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video. Warning, Gulf Coast Tuning and Calibration is not responsible for vehicle, property, or personal damage done by using any of the information contained in these videos. Watching and implementing this information is done at your own risk, and we are not responsible for your actions or what you do with our information. All tuning should be done on safe, closed courses using the proper safety precautions recommended by sanctioning officials of those facilities. Okay, so we finished the drive of the speed density table. Um, in the way that it's kind of been for a while and with the mass airflow sensor being turned off it's been it was surprisingly um, poor running especially like at idle and everything um, you know and coast down you could tell it was a little lean it was kind of wanting to misbehave um, so right now we can see um, that our mass airflow sensor has failed and we've set our PO1 uh, 101 102 and 103 to mill on first error and then under the engine side, under airflow dynamic, uh, we've set our high RPM disabled to 8,000. Okay, so if we go over here to the, um, and also you can see here in the file, we can see that catalytic, uh, the, the diesel fuel cutoff is still on. Cat uh, over temp is disabled and it's gonna remain enabled. But the big one is this right here. Um, and this is a mildly, I guess, aggressive, I wouldn't say this is aggressive, this is about where I put, you know, a lot of my customers' um, power enrichment settings. You know, if it was forced induction, it would probably be just a, a little more aggressive than this. Um, but you can see, this is our short-term uh, fuel trims, okay? And if we go to our graphs layout, um, that's what it's plotting. And then we have our RPM and manifold pressure and the axes are all scaled correctly. And you can see this is basically all you're going to get. Um, you know, because when you get down here into these zeros, if you watch over here under the fuel system status, it's gonna tell you when it goes into open loop briefly. And you can also, um, you can also check the throttle position. So I, can, I know that at 3,100 RPM, um, if we go back to our table over here, 3100 somewhere in here. Yeah, we're we're um, we've already surpassed that threshold, um, so we're in open loop. So essentially, we're not gathering any data. Um, so this is just kind of how the table filled out. Um, this is about a third 22 minute drive. I was driving to work one day, so back at school. It's a football game day, um, so just trying to capture some data. Um, but what we're gonna do now, we're gonna save this one. And I actually am logging the short term fuel trim average. Um, and again, you can kind of follow that. I don't, this, I don't have this, these charts uh, laid out exactly the way they need to be, um, but for right now it works just fine. But definitely over here, as I'm kind of coasting down, you, you, know, you can see it dropping into the 500-ish range. You know, it was over in this area, it was really starting to kind of struggle and I could tell that it was not very happy. Um, so this is what this log looked like um, and if you would like a copy of this, I can email it to you if you'd like to see it as well as the, the next one that we're going to do. But now we're going to go ahead and set the file up for the uh, what we're getting ready to do. So I'm going to set this entire table to 75%. Now, when you do this and you basically, you know, make it hard to get into power enrichment, it's not a bad thing, um, but you need to... Um, you need to be cautious about making full throttle hits, essentially. 
We're also gonna go over here to this, uh, this D-cell fuel cutoff. We're gonna put this high, like 285. No, we're not gonna blow ourselves up. And one other thing I was gonna tell you is that when you go to your data log, um, a trick that you can use, if we go over here, let's see if I've got it set up here. When you go to your table, you can go to these cell hits required and you can make this something more like five maybe and just kind of see so there might have been some outliers that made their way in that you wouldn't you know, necessarily want to copy and paste this data. You'd have to go in, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You'd have to go into each section and you know, richen this up, richen this up, lean this out a little bit, so on and so forth. So hopefully on this next one, we're going to see more data populated out here. Um, you know, and there's not many times in this log where I really stood in it just because I knew it wouldn't be capturing data because it's going into open loop and these uh, the oxygen sensors aren't going to plot that data. So this is what the um, what it looks like when you don't turn anything off. Now again, I do have catalytic overtemp turned off, but a lot of you guys do too. Um, so that's kind of what this table looks like. And I can tell you again, in this range, it was starting to not be happy. So uh, certainly with the mass airflow sensor turned on, I did not have that issue. Um, but this is where it's at for right now. So um, now that we've got our files set up, we've got diesel fuel cutoff uh, disabled as well as power enrichment basically. Um, and you can see here I'm commanding 12, 12.5, and I've already got mine set up um, for 10% um, ethanol um, down here at essentially 0% because it's all 10%, so 14.1 is what we change it to. Um, so that's where we're at with that. So the next one, uh, we're going to get a data log with this file, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're back in the truck, and we're going to fire this thing up. It is fully warmed up. Just made a quick stop. And we're gonna go ahead and turn the data logger on and start recording some data. Um, so the only thing that I will tell you, also be careful when you're putting your laptop um, in your seat like this, that you're cautious about the um, USB cable. If you're gonna really stand in it or anything, you need to make sure that you kind of hold the laptop and try to, try to keep it from sliding around. Um, so, um, when you're doing this tuning though, where you've got power enrichment disabled, basically, you've got to make sure that you don't do any full throttle rips, you know, um, just because the, you don't have any extra enrichment. So, um, it seems to be running okay right now. It was just kind of strange yesterday how it was, it was kind of, idle and low and just being kind of funky so uh, we are capturing data right now um, there really isn't a way to capture all of the cell points like you see uh, in videos like with a load bearing dyno especially if you have a loose converter um, there's a lot of those cell points that you're just not going to hit so you just need to kind of keep that um, in mind you know, you can put it in drive or a second gear or third gear manually with the this shift selector and, you know, you can, um, you know, try to hit some of the different load points, but realistically, you know, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna hit all those load points, you know, unless you were towing a trailer, going uphill. But honestly, you know, in the last, in the last basically, nine or ten months of really doing this in the last nine or ten months of doing this you know it it just in my opinion really isn't all that big of a deal you know you need to drive the vehicle the way that you would drive it to work or around town or out cruising and that's about as good as you can do um, 99% of the combinations out there and uh, probably 99% of the ones that I've done, it, it's going to be more than sufficient. So, um, you just need to be careful too. The next, next thing on the list for this deal is to get the exhaust swapped out. So what we're expecting with this test is that we're gonna have some more data points to hit because power enrichment, AKA open loop, 
our open loop wide open throttle fueling is not going to be commanded as early you know so anything above about 2200 rpm and about 50 percent throttle and up is gonna is is open loop capable so um you know i can already see in the logger just a couple of spots that we're already hitting that we weren't hitting before you know um so don't want to get on it too much but we do want to try to hit some of those points so we're going to cruise on the interstate some um, you need to be careful uh, when doing this depending on where your spark timing is you know you might find that you have some knock retard in some of those areas where you need the extra enrichment um, you know but uh, we'll talk about that kind of at the end and how I would go about setting that up you know as as much as uh, you know if it was a vehicle that was a weekend vehicle um, that runs premium fuel you know you can be a lot more aggressive with with your power enrichment enable um, there is a point of diminishing returns where you know even in a combination like this you know just ripping up the power enrichment that's not going to make it faster so to speak I mean there's a point where the OEM commanded 87% or 90%, you know, whatever it is in the trucks, you know, is, is, you know, pretty mild, you know, so getting it somewhere in the 60 or 70 range is good, you know, but cruising around, you know, with 40% enable or, or, or less all the time, um, you're wasting gas and it's just not, I mean, if it, if it doesn't have hard, good hard parts in it, fast hard parts, then it, it's not going to make the number, so to speak. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of a drive cycle here and uh, we'll be done with the day log and we'll kind of go over this and we'll talk about how we're gonna make some changes. Okay guys, so uh, we finally have the data log from the second tune file that we created um, the other day where we went in and we turned off this number 106 current right here where we turned off um, fuel decel cutoff as well as we disabled power enrichment to uh, needing at least 75% throttle. So we now have the uh, tune file, or sorry, the data log from this second one. And we're gonna toggle over here to our short-term fuel trims. Um, and like I said in the uh, little headshot video that I did, um, you don't wanna go full you know send on this thing while you're driving it because you don't have any of the extra enrichment but you can kind of get the gist of what's going on here and also too we'll go to our graphs layout short-term fuel trim be table and you notice we have our cell hits required to five if we put this to zero we could see yeah so we have some different values in here um you could even lighten this up a little bit and you could maybe put this at let's just call it three and just kind of see and you can you'll be able to see too this is a 24 minute um drive on the interstate kind of around town and this is where we ended up um you know so you can see over here we know we never get to a point you know we noticed down here where it was uh, going into open loop and we never are going to hit any of this at all just because of the load i put it in second gear i put it in third gear and it just this is just the area that it liked to be in um, so I can tell you right now that, you know, really anything under within about 10 or plus or minus 10%, um, that's pretty good. So if you can be anywhere near this five range, we have a seven in here, a five, a six, a four, a minus six, a minus five. If you can be anywhere in that range, you're going to be fine. Um, you're actually going to be better than fine. It's going to be, you know, pretty good. And if we had the VE table running um, of, you know, what it would look like with the stock VE table in it, um, these values would be all over the place, okay? So, now the real question is, what can you do with this? Like, let's say these values were maybe bigger. Um, we had more uh, numbers that were, you know, in that 10, 11, 12, 13 range. So, if we, and I have the, these axes are correct, the column and the row axes. So, if we hit copy, though, and we go to our tune file, um... We'll go over here to engine. We'll go over here to airflow, main VE primary. 
a lot of places uh, are going to tell you, and I've talked about this in the past, a lot of people are gonna tell you to go up here and highlight all, pay special, you can hit multiply, okay? If we, and you can see the changes that it makes. If we come in here, it definitely makes this kind of choppy. Um, what I would recommend you, I'm gonna undo this, what I would recommend you do um, if your values are this close, I would recommend that you maybe try a paste special multiply by half. That way it's a little less invasive um, because you can overshoot uh, your values. So where you were maybe three or 4% rich, you can now be two or 3% lean or vice versa. You know, And then once you smooth it, so it's a little bit less choppy. Um, I would probably not go in here and manually enter in any of this data. Um, you could you could go to this range right here and add, um, you know, uh, 3% or 4% of fuel. Um, as always, I'm going to caution you about doing something like this, where we highlight it all and we smooth the whole thing. It's going to change values out here. So we're going to undo that. Okay. And again, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do a pay special multiply by half. What I would do now is maybe go and do a little bit of blending, something like this. Um, what you're looking for, you don't wanna to grab too many. 72, 73, this all looks good. It's a little choppy right here. You could maybe go to the side like this. There again, you just kind of have to, and you can see it start to smooth out a little bit. Um, you could even try doing something like that. It's gonna make a big change. I might undo that. Um, you could kind of grab a chunk like this and just smooth it once. Um, that's not a terrible idea. And you can see it kind of start to take shape. It's kind of this little ridge up here. You could take this and just hit smooth a couple of times. Same, same thing right here. There again, what you're going to find is that a lot of the time, these areas that are maybe kind of choppy, um, oops, oops, careful when you grab them, they'll, you got to right click them. When you grab them and they're choppy, um, you're going to have areas where you're not actually going to hit some of those spots. So like this spot right here, this is going to all be like decel. Okay. So, you know, you can go in here and do one or two little smooths and that's probably going to be okay. Um, but I wouldn't worry about too, too, too much of this. Um, again, if you have really large values, you know, you can make large changes if it's a fresh build kind of thing. Um, but, there's just not much to this stuff, guys. I mean, it, it, you know, especially for 90% of these street driven combinations, if it's, if you're smoothing this stuff and thinking that your ET is going to pick up or your dyno number is going to pick up, you'd have to be really far out in left field. But if you drove on the, on this VE table and the vehicle runs and idles and accelerates and does what it's supposed to do, it's pretty close. Typically it's pretty close. So, um, if you're trying to chase getting to zero values, you're, it's not, you're not, you're not going to get there. It's not going to happen. Okay. So, uh, what you would do now is we would go in and we would hit save as, and, uh, we would maybe label this for me, this is 107. I would label this as 107 VE closed loop finished. And I would go and I would maybe put to load and we would go out and drive it again and see what it does. So, yeah, guys, so if you uh, enjoyed this video, um, we're going to be doing some more stuff kind of like this that a lot of you guys are doing on the street. So make sure you comment, like, subscribe, send me a message, an email, um, anything that you want to know or that you want to see me do or that you're not sure about. Um, I can go out and test it, you know, uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. Thanks for watching.